drew you to the whole idea of voiceovers? Do you like watching a lot of trailers? Anytime my friend, my family would have, you know, friends over um, that were from other countries, I thought, oh my God, what mysterious people these are. They're from foreign lands, and they have these sophisticated accents, and they're speaking these dialects, you know. And um, I started to collect them like stamps, you know. I just was like really in tune to it, and then. Fast forward to going to drama school in England and working really hard. I knew I wanted to be an actor from a young age. And, um, voice seemed like this amazing, it's the ultimate acting tool, you know. And voice acting with is mind-boggling because you're not judged by what you look like. You can be anyone. You do voiceover, you can be anybody. And that's pretty cool. I enjoyed the movie a lot yesterday. And as a triple threat writer, director, actor, it just made me curious, do you sing as well? <laughs> I mean, if you saw the movie, you saw pretty much what I'm capable of. Um, oh. <laughs> um, my, my karaoke is, you know, you know, just sort of free, but not great, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I'm not a singer, no. Only because I know what professional singers sound like, and I know my voice very well. And I'm a mimicker, but I'm not a singer. <laughs> okay. I, could, I always felt like in drama school, though, anything that I was given to do, I'll... I'll give it a go. So I feel like in the same way that vocal training is so important to me, that you can, I'm not tone deaf, so it's like I could do it, but it, I just admire people who can, you know, open their mouth and just take on a whole room. I admire that. So. I once had a director ask me to do the Scottish accent, and I couldn't, I just couldn't do it. Have you found that, is there a particular accent that you can't do? Well, I've always studied accents because of um, conservatory training. You take it on totally phonetically. So it's all good. You can totally do any accent in the world when you do it phonetically because you're dissecting it in such a scientific way that you don't just put it on. You know, you don't just listen to it and, you know, uh, listen to a Scottish accent a couple times and get it. It's so scientific. It's so cool. <laughs> so you can get up in there and then think about where it's placed in your mouth and so where the sound, you know, just even when thinking thinking about in British RP, you know, sort of very posh, all very in front, you know, very frontal, while American is way back here. It's like throwing it in the right place, in the in the nose, below the nose, where the breath is supported. I mean, you can, I mean, I can't do Scottish right now, but could I? Could you? You could. And so could I. How, how do you write funny? <laughs> do you, do that? Um, you know what, I think you do what you feel comfortable doing. I couldn't write sketch. I'm not a sketch writer. You know, it's a different type of comedy. I'm not a broad sketch writer. Like, I wouldn't write Children's Hospital. I can direct it. But I can write what I can, the type of comedy that I think is funny, that feels natural to me, that is observational from my own exposure to the world and to the, the way that my family and my friends and the way I react with the world. But I don't, there's no sort of like, this is how you do it. You know, you do what you know. That's what people always say. Write what you know. It's very real. It's a cliche for a reason. It was fun. Thank you. It was. <laughs> I appreciate it. Was it. Again, improvisation is somewhat of a luxury when you're on set and production moves so quickly. So even in Children's Hospital, we barely improvise because there's no time. We shoot two episodes in four days and they're ambitious. If you watch them, you see how more and more ambitious we get. It's like really difficult. So we want to play, but often you don't get the opportunity. Maybe one line's not working, you're like, uh, let's try something else, you know, but you gotta go. <laughs> so often in this movie, for instance, I shot it in 20 days, um, and I shot it for under a million dollars. So, uh, you know, to have the luxury of finding, sort of finding the scene or letting it like get loose, I mean, we just didn't have that. So we, stick, we stuck to the script, and then at the end, um, and everybody kind of understands that, like on these kinds of sets, you kind of know you got to know your words and you get there and you're very professional about it. But then, then we'd always have some fun, playful takes once we got the scene in the can. And that's where a lot of like little things that I got to add in um, in the final edit found themselves. Like Nick Offerman being like, uh, I'm sure they just did moral. You know, that, that is, you know, a Nick Offerman improvised line, which is great. So, you know, there's a couple, there's a handful of, you know, just to sprinkle on top, just, just for fun. I like to surround myself with people who I know as people, not just from afar. I, I want, I also like to surround myself with people with good attitude. I don't like any cynic, cynics, I don't like having any.
sort of divas, or I don't really have time, you know, it's like, there's no point, it's the coolest job in the world, like, what are you bitching about, you know what I mean? Um, and I'm not, I'm just not interested in working with people who aren't so jazzed to be there. So I tend to work with people that I have either worked with, or that um, I've heard are great, or that I admire from afar. Because I don't want to fall in love with someone who's not, you know, who I can't aspire to one day work with, you know? And, um, I just feel like life's too short, you know? It's just not, it's just too cool of a job to kind of ruin with one person who, you know, forgot the, 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 the optimism that is just getting to do what you love. I mean, that's just not, that's a bore. Do you think that whole, you know, like, positive outlook thing that you have, do you think that's part of the reason why you gravitate towards comedies more? Pro yeah, probably. I mean, I think um, the movies that I enjoy watching, I mean, I actually like to see all kinds of movies, but yeah, I like to go to work and, and feel that the idea of being playful is honored, you know, and not sort of squashed. Right. Um, it's nice to go to work and think, I mean, going to children's hospital every day is... Like everybody on that cast looks forward to it. Not just the cast, everyone in every department. The art department, the you know, set design department, I mean like the DP, every we're all so happy to be there. And you know, you, you really learn a lesson about what it how profound it is to just be surrounded by people who want to be there. It's pretty simple, but you can control that <laughs> if you want to. Um, and so I, I, I love movies. I'm a movie goer, so this moment right now is like so profound and romantic, really, because you know people get to buy popcorn and they get to get some milk duds, raisinets, and make their choices to go in and see in the world. And that I never knew that that would affect me so much. That that was so cool. I never really thought of this moment really as much as I, I've been so trained in on just. Um, trying to control the experience of, of viewers in, in different festivals and whatnot, but now that it's here, it's Can you tell then about the experience at Sundance? Didn't it play at Sundance? It did indeed. Um, it, it, um, you know, I was in competition at Sundance. I was one of the, uh, this year was the first year that they had half um, female filmmakers and half uh, male filmmakers. The movie did great, and, and just being there in itself is sort of, um, an accolade, but um, and then it, it won the screenwriting award at Sundance this year, um, which was probably the most unexpected, uh, wonderful thing that I ever experienced in my life. I really did not think we were contenders even in that, um, mainly because it's comedy, and I didn't. Yeah, I, didn't, um, I was totally relaxed in the award show. I knew that I was not getting anything, so I was drinking beer and sort of like, you know, <laughs> they called me. I was. It was so. Um, yeah, my stomach was um, air. Uh, but anyway, so so yes, it did wonderfully, and I'm massively thankful, uh, and I'll never forget it for the rest of my life. Congratulations! Thank you. I haven't seen the trailer for your film. Does it oh, have yeah. a voice? Of um, it well, does. I, I wrestled. In I wrestled. <laughs> yeah, I wrestled really hard in the trailer because it was. I was like, should I do the voiceover on this trailer? And the, the problem is, it became distracting versus telling you about the movie. You know, it started to, it started to uh, sully the kind of just. I wanted viewers to be wrapped with it. And frankly, I'm a trailer junkie, so I wanted. Just, so I went for just classic, good old-fashioned comedy trailer. But it's in the world, it's great that it.